So let's now move on to the different types of trauma. So like I said, there's no such thing as a traumatic event, just events that are perceived as being traumatic. And there's, there's a few different types as well. So let's go through each one. So there's single incident traumas. So that could be things like, you know, an accident, whether it's motor vehicle, workplace injury, it could be assault, whether it's physical or sexual, it could be armed robbery. So these could be single events that could lead to uh, these traumatic, I guess these responses from single events. It could also be uh, mass events. So things like natural disasters, bushfires, it's been massive, particularly uh, last year and early this year as well. Uh, the floods are also an issue as well. Uh, it could be acts of terror, uh, war. Uh, there's also what's categorized as complex traumas. And these could be things that are considered sort of ongoing. So it's not a singular event, but they are ongoing things like um, bullying, whether it's um, in school, whether it's um, socially in the workplace. It could be things like torture uh, and abuse as well can be an ongoing thing as well, which is really unfortunate. Um, and abuse is categorized not just as physical. It could also be emotional abuse as well. So very emotionally controlling. Uh, remember that definition about that loss of sense of control? If someone's very emotionally controlling, the I suppose a victim would experience a loss of control as well. So keeping that in mind, it doesn't have to be physical. There's also indirect events as well. So vicarious trauma. Anyone heard of that term vicarious trauma before? No? I'll go, go into it tomorrow, but it's really, uh, you know, if I can give you an example, it's where people might have, um, they might work in a field, let's say sort of medical nurses or emergency nurses. Uh, they might sort of come across a number of people who uh, experience domestic violence and they, they come to them. And over time, uh, even though they haven't experienced domestic violence directly themselves, because they hear about it through their patients coming through emergency, over time, these nurses might start to believe that uh, there aren't any good relationships out there. So it's not something that they've experienced directly, but it starts to uh, inform their beliefs. So that's um, considered vicarious trauma. Um, it could be remembering an event um, or intergenerational trauma, and that can be uh, you know, relevant for the indigenous community. Uh, it could be sort of, if we go back in time, sort of uh, the Jewish Holocaust victims as well. Um, so yeah, intergenerational trauma is something that's, um, I suppose, considered sort of complex, but also an indirect as well, because they, they weren't actually physically present there. Let me give you some numbers on, uh, I've noted that the prevalence of potentially traumatic events, okay, potentially traumatic events, because it's, again, based on people's perception. Now, you can see that 70, 50 to 75% of people report at least one potentially traumatic event that they've experienced, okay? So that's half to three quarters of everybody, the whole population, have experienced at least one potentially traumatic event, okay? But does everyone get diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder? Absolutely not. That's not the case at all. But I just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, the numbers. So 50 to 75% of people, that's more than half, have experienced at least one potentially traumatic event. So you can see in the, the pie chart there, uh, it ranges from things like having someone close die unexpectedly, witnessing of someone killed or badly injured, a life-threatening car accident and other as well. So yeah, there's lots of different types of events, but a lot of people, more than half, so the majority have experienced at least one. Any surprises there? Does that seem a bit high, more than you thought? Yeah. Now PTSD, the prevalence of PTSD. So PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. I'll get into sort of the criteria shortly, but it's it was, the background of it really comes back from uh, war when Military personnel, they were at war, uh, you know, obviously horrific things happened at war, right? Uh, they didn't have any symptoms of that low mood or anxiety or that fear. They didn't have that during war. It was only when they came back after the war finished, they came back home, that they started to withdraw. They had that emotional numbing. They lost their purpose in life. Um, you know, they couldn't concentrate. They couldn't sleep. So it was all coming back to them once it finished. And so that's why it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. Now the lifetime prevalence, so what I mean by lifetime is not just at this present moment, but over someone's lifetime, uh, up to sort of 10%, between five and 10% of people can be diagnosed with this. Compare that to the 50 to 75% of people who have experienced a potentially traumatic event. That's uh, not everyone, is it? That's a small minority. Yeah, only five to 10% of people. And even though people might be uh, diagnosed with it, over half of people recover within the first 12 months. Recovery rates are more than half within the first 12 months. So 
hopefully that gives you some gives you some helpful information. But number one, I want you to have hope that people who have experienced trauma, they can recover. I put in the picture of the bamboo there because bamboos are very resilient plants, trees. Yeah, they can thrive and survive in the harshest of environments. So I think people are like that as well. If 50 to 75 percent of people experience uh, a potentially traumatic event, but only five to ten people, five to ten people to 10% of people are actually diagnosed with PTSD over a lifetime. I think that is a sign of human resilience. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.